What is TypeScript? Well, it's just JavaScript with extra syntax, which turns it into a statically typed compiled language like C, Java, or Golang. So basically, it's for babies and not for JavaScript chads like me who don't need that stuff. Okay, in the seriousness, in this video, we're gonna talk about TypeScript. What are the good parts, what are the bad parts, and should you actually learn it, especially when there's a million other more interesting things that you could be learning right now. So first, what does compile mean? Well, it just adds an extra build step in between where you write your code and when you run your code. Since browsers can't actually run TypeScript, only JavaScript, it has to be actually converted to JavaScript. And in between, in this build step, a bunch of tests are run. So it makes it harder to write bad code. The other term in that definition was static typed, meaning every time you declare a variable, a function, or an object, it also needs an extra keyword that says, hey, this is a string, this is a number, this is an array of strings. Speaking of objects, these are called interfaces in TypeScript and structures in other statically typed languages. And every single property has to be predefined in advance. You also have to predefine a function's parameters and return values, which can just make you more confident about using that function without looking at the definition. So I know you still don't understand this or you're just thinking, okay, I get it, types, but what is the actual benefit? Well, the benefit is now everything has to plug together. So a number variable has to go into a number function and the return value, a Boolean, can now go in an if statement and you don't have to kind of manually piece it all together in your head. The types and the compiler do that for you. In other words, if you try to put a square peg into a round hole, it just won't work. And that's a good thing. So beyond that, what are the benefits or the good things about writing TypeScript? How does it help you? Well, because everything has to fit together to compile, you can be actually more confident that your code is gonna work. <laughs> Like I said, running the compiler is kind of like running a set of tests, and it won't compile unless it passes. And these tests dramatically reduce what's known as runtime errors, which can also occur in the live version of your apps. That is your app catching on fire after you already release it to users. Runtime errors are extremely insidious because they don't always have a clear error message, and they can actually be very difficult to debug, especially with the weird way a lot of JavaScript's types work. Now, all this makes it easier to actually work on a team and kind of trust what your team members are doing. I'm not saying you shouldn't trust them, but let's be honest, the new front-end engineer, he does look a bit suspicious. Anyway, you can be more confident in using your teammates, functions, interfaces, and more easily share definitions. The last very clear benefit is that it improves your IDE or code editor experience. For example, it'll give you all the properties in your predefined object and if you write an error it'll usually give you a little red underline right away saying it was expecting a different type to plug into that position now despite what you hear from the typescript fanboys there are some downsides to typescript that are very apparent needless to say you will have more lines of code a lot more you're gonna have the overhead of writing additional definitions for every single object or function that you write. And then if you ever wanna add a property to that object, you also have to update the object type definition. This leads to people getting lazy and just writing the any type on their variables, which actually just breaks the whole thing. If you're using a code library and there's no TypeScript version of that library, the types are not gonna work in that case either. Lastly, its use is also pretty limited unless your full stack is type integrated, which in most cases it's not. Let me explain, if you have a REST API, there's no way to be sure what kind of object the API is returning. Even if the definition says one thing, it could always change or be undefined or null or whatever. You just don't know for sure. So you'll define the shape of that response object, but what if it's not true? Then your app is still gonna have a runtime error. Anyway, there are ways to make your stack fully type integrated through things like protocol buffers, but that is much more complex to set up and much more uncommon than the loosely defined REST API. And if you're just a front end developer, you're not in control of the full stack anyway. So when do you actually need to use TypeScript? For the reasons I mentioned, in my view, it should always be used when multiple people are contributing to a single project, especially if you're editing the same file so you can stay on the same page. If your JavaScript project does get really large, and especially if it's fully integrated front end to back end, then it also makes sense to use TypeScript, not just for your teammates, but for yourself in the future when you inevitably forget what these types or definitions are supposed to be. I think it also makes more sense to add TypeScript when you already have a build step. For example, if you're using a framework like React or Angular, that already has to be converted to vanilla JavaScript. So since you already have that step anyway, you're not exactly adding any additional tooling overhead. But if you're cobbling together a small project like a little library, some scripts for a static page, or even just writing vanilla JavaScript for a normal sized app, I would avoid it because you're adding complexity configuration and that extra step where you don't actually get the benefit from it. Now, the real question you've all been waiting for, should you learn it? 
And it's not a question of would it help you or not, because it certainly would if to better understand strongly type languages, if nothing else. But the real question is how important is it to your learning goals? In short, I would say don't learn it until you've mastered JavaScript and here's why. You don't wanna learn it from the beginning, be forced to rely on it, and then have to work on a project where you don't have it as a luxury. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is when you're starting out, you're probably not building projects that are complex enough to warrant using TypeScript. In fact, you probably wanna focus on the project and rapid prototyping rather than trying to get each type exactly right, which does give you that better maintainability. You can objectively say the code is safer but at what cost? Precious hours of your life. Think about it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video and hope the jokes weren't too dumb in this one. Everyone has a different sense of humor, so I usually try to avoid it. But this time I couldn't help myself. By the way, I never mentioned this on my channel, but we actually have a one hour free training on the fastest way to become a web and e-commerce developer, which is part of my free mode bootcamp. But this is just a piece of content we put out for free. And if it sounds interesting, just check that out below. Anyway, with all that said, catch you guys soon. See you in the next one.